Okay, so unfortunately my attempts yesterday to resolve whatever the hell's going on with threading failed. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to I'm just going to start from scratch just start from scratch again on thread pools. And see if I can come up with a proper implementation and see if I can simplify it a little bit as well. I mean, I don't know how I could simplify it more than this, but maybe I just need a clean slate of some sort. So, just blah, thread pool two. Or actually, let's do this. We'll do this, and we'll kind of we got that for thread pool, which is kind of. I'm just going to clear it because how is this going to work? Okay, we'll have we have that, we'll have a bunch of you have that. Great, full export, start, blah 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 blah. Get rid of the rest of this. So we're gonna have full export and it's going to be like a start. Start terminate uh, num number of threads. Uh, we'll have to schedule. We have private stuff, which is going to be what we'll have. Let me get out of here. What do I have? Number of threads started, run thread. Okay, yeah. Whether or not we've started, I need a vector of threads. Task sync.
got task sync, we've got the tasks, and then we need a task condition. We need a task available, task complete. And we'll have a standard atomic bool for Okay, let's um, move to this side. Let's clear all that. Let's Regardless of what we're doing, we'll do that to determine the number of threads we're going to start with. So I don't really need a count. I can get that from the vector when I start. So we're expecting. I need to see like has it already been started or not. So I need expecting equals false. I need to go through while or if not um, and started. But compare exchange strong expected true. If we'd failed to start, then we just got to return false. We didn't start it. Otherwise, we're now the ones in the start. Um. We just have to go through four. I gotta do that. Uh, we'll just kind of do like M threads dot reserve the size known threads. We'll need a Thread function. And it'll be given this. Then I'll start the threads. And then once we've gone through and we've created them all, return true. Okay. Uh, terminate.
false, we'll actually like say whether or not we're returning successfully terminated or not. I'm I'm assuming that you're not going to try to call terminate on it multiple times at once. Otherwise, I'll have to do a bit more logic that I don't really care to do right now. So, we do that, we say wait. And then afterwards, we're going to have to go through four of all of them. We can come and join. I'd also have to notify them all, right? Join, we uh, set M terminate back to false. And set M started to false. Return true, great. We want to schedule. Unique lock or, uh, or is it like scoped lock? Um, scoped lock is the one I'm looking for, really. Locked it up, and we're going to just say m in place task. We'll then notify someone, and then we unlock. Or do we do it the other way around? If we notify someone and then we unlock, then they wake up, I think. Right? Okay, we've scheduled. Now we need to do the wait function. Okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. Now I was waiting on that. 
Should I though? Yeah. Complete. Just try the wait for the moment before I try to wait for. So we we're, we're on this lock that we have. So we've we're releasing the lock while we wait for this. While this is not complete, we're gonna sit here waiting. be here for I'm just gonna wait for that then we have okay we've started the thread we're gonna do what we're gonna just we have okay we have function Function going to defer the lock while true we're going to lock dot lock we're going to secure the lock and then we're going to go into this uh, task available I'm going to wait on the lock so that'll unlock it, then we're gonna be waiting for this. Mm. Or and terminate, okay. Is this C++ just broke it or something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> okay, M tasks not in place. Needs a, a unique lock. Two arguments provided, really. Oh, 
What? Is expecting un a unique lock. Okay. Uh, condition variable. Mm, it's supposed to wait. You have a lock, and then you have a function. Okay. Is it okay? So it's just expecting. Because it, it only works with that, right? Is that what's going on here? Mm, no. Expect it. Okay, we got that. M tasks. The place moving back I guess we can't just put this on the back maybe deck you requires actually saying in place back okay wait there's two overloads yes this and this Okay. Mm. Not sure on that one, actually. I'm still like This one works. What? Then what's wrong with you? It's a void. Is it a void? Why is it a void? I thought uh, the wait function is wait blocks the current thread. Void. They're both. They're both voids. Okay. This doesn't do anything then so I gotta wait hmm is it like maybe a wait for does a wait for is that what I'm thinking does a wait for return something yes Okay. Okay, for the moment, let's just say while not empty and is greater than zero. Or that is greater than zero. Keep going, just do it just do a busy wait. And then we'll come back and do something smarter with it. For now, this. So we're here. 
we have if if tasks are empty right now we have the lock which is the task sync lock so we can safely do this if that in processing we're going to do they're going to get whatever the front one is pop front I'm going to unlock that okay process it and once it's done we're going to say okay we're done processing we go through to something else blah 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 else if m terminate breakout otherwise if we have the lock and then we break out then we automatically lose it when we leave the scope so then it's unlocked okay I like it's actually trying to keep things somewhat alive all right no member named unlock in condition variable why am I doing this? Just get rid of this. Don't need it. Not right now. Okay, we're supposed to have just after terminate we have size Okay, um, we're going to be running what libs for test. Was fast it actually just breaks right away cool um just build everything and we'll just see where we go
sorry, if not tasks empty. That didn't help apparently. No, oh, no, 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 I don't want to save that one. Well, not tasks empty, okay, great. Really? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is this? Terminate. We're waiting for all tasks. We're in here. We're waiting. So while we're waiting here, we are what? Doing a function. There's lots of tasks, but apparently. Sorry, which catch test are we doing? Test. We start a number of threads, and then we're. There are no jobs added. So why? Why do you think there's that whole? Oh, wow. Um. Interesting. Right. There's no. I. Yeah. Maybe it's because it says started, even though it's not. Threads. Da, 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 da. Processing starts at zero, always. Tasks available. That's okay. Am I not actually starting to... I'm not, that's why, isn't it? Well, regardless, it's good to start those. Well, that was fast. It usually bro broke on the first one. Okay, I don't know like if this is good or not. Um, let's 
change to the thread sanitizer. Let's just see if it thinks that there's anything wrong. Oh, it's just not even looping. It's just kind of. Do I just did I just forget how this works? User bin end. Oh. Well, that was fast. Cool. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So what we got, what we got, what we got, what we got. Okay, we got this, right of this, okay. Right of size eight by thread here. And when there was a read here, or what, what's going on? Mutex. The thread that was created here. What data race between here, the de at the deck at the pop front. Really. But I have the lock during this period of time. No one else should be able to do stuff here, especially with M task sync, right? Hmm. New text created here. Uh, this thread function right here. What's the problem? Reading file, right of size at thread T3 here, which is going on through the deck queue, the double ended queue where it's popping the front. This is supposedly still under the lock area. Uh, maybe this is just like a. Um, Thing where I have to say like you know uh, like strict ordering or something along those lines. I got a standard deferred lock right now. Try lock 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 four multi. But it's a mutex. It's a mutually exclusive. Hmm. 
don't really see anything about that. Okay. Um... I don't fail to restore the stack. Ah, uh, incredibly useful. It is debug, editor mode, like I got nothing else basically going on here. Okay, if I was to remove the thread sanitizer for the moment. Why is this a data race? Hmm? It's because it's like task. It's this guy, isn't it? This guy is reading it eight bytes, right? It's reading it uh, at the same time as he's trying to write to it. That's the issue. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if I'm actually, I don't think I'm actually starting. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so it seems to be going okay. Like it's not. <sighs> okay, well, okay. This, this annoying something rather. What? Do I sync it up to this task sync? I'd have to, because that's the only way I can safely access tasks without failing badly, really. And processing is atomic, so I can access that outside. Okay. If that... Then I can turn it, I can break out. And then we'll have standard scope lock. We'll have a scope lock. It's going to be the lock that bases itself off of task complete. While true. If that, oh no, no, I need to, I need to lock it first. I need to defer the lock first, right? No, I need to I need to grab it. Dot wait for cross two arguments. So it does require
so we so we just stick stay in here until then sorry unique lock This can't be right. This is effectively the same as that one. I've locked it with a task complete. Oh, that's not a that's not a mutex. That's the mutex. Okay, let's try that again. Seems to work fine. Okay, uh, let's build it with uh, the thread sanitizer. See if it actually stops complaining. Build it fast. Oh no. There we go. Okay, let's run it like that. Okay, so we got a problem with that. But it's not complaining about the th um, thread read-write issue anymore. So that's a positive. It's just that. Uh, I need to recompile. Nope. Evidently, it's locked up somewhere. I never call task complete for one actually. Just notify all. Okay, we got another lock up uh, soft lock somewhere obviously it's going to require debugging great it paused somewhere perfect Oh, so what we got? This guy is waiting here. That's right. So he returns if there it's not empty or there's a terminate. So this returns if there are no tasks and processing is empty. Which would actually have to happen after this, for one. Okay. Okay, let's try to run this a few times. I'm going to have to build a function that does a lot of more testing of threading, obviously, in this minimal thread pool, but
Okay, let's compare this with what I had before, the one that kept screwing up. So, shrink that down. So what I got, what's going on? I had, that was the same. If tasks are empty, then it would keep going. Because I did have it locked at that point. Mm -hmm. And processing tasks equals that pop unlock task processing. So Okay, what if the only reason I'll be coming out of this is because tasks is empty. Okay, well, maybe there is another case where I don't know. It did do this, perhaps? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, the only reason it'll ever come out of this is because, and uh, from a spurious, <sighs> wake up. Let me let me reread the thing on spurious wake ups. Condition variable. Go to wait. Wait causes the current thread to block until the condition variable is notified or a spurious wake-up occurs, optionally looping until some predicate is, satisfy is satisfied. Okay. One atomically unlocks. Two, okay, two already does the spurious thing because uh, the second case is like basically does this in a loop. Otherwise, it re-waits, so I don't actually have to put this in a loop either. And the only reason it'll get out is because that case over here is satisfied. So this is almost the same thing. So this is pro most probably going to fail in the same way as well. It has to. What did I have originally, then, for... This. I had a Q. Hmm. Whatever. So this should fail. Sometime, somehow, somewhere. If I was to GDB this. Run it. Okay, great. Uh, first try, I guess. So I imagine this is going to be in the in the in the same locked case as this original case, the original set. All right. So backtrace. This one is currently waiting. Uh, condition variable here. Okay. Okay, thread, I need to list, sorry. Frame, okay. Thread. Thread apply, thread find.
info threads. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Uh, we got that. So thread two, backtrace that. Um, he started, he's waiting for something. Okay, thread five. Waiting here at this condition variable, okay. So yeah, we did. Thread six will be the same thing, right? Backtrace, same thing. He's looking at 83. So yeah, we got the exact same state again that I had yesterday. Fantastic. Yeah, quit out. How do I deal with this? He's waiting for task complete, but do I have, do I make this? <laughs> okay. What if I also had like, so tasks and standard comic uint uh, task count starts at zero. What if I uh, run with this thing as well? I increment the task count and that and I decrement it when I come out of here. So instead of running into issues trying to look at this, I can say, hey, you know, m task count while that sit in here. Uh, actually, no, first of all, run it. Make sure our thread sanitizer is not going to compl complain about it. It's not successfully leaving. So that's not good. That's not good either. It's just freezing up real early this time instead. So this is not helping. Okay, stop it here. So we, what we got? 
Do 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 do. You're here. You're here. You're waiting for the lock. Oh, he lock. Okay, we got it locked up here. That's why, and we never release it. I need to remake it, then test it. So we're not getting thread sanitizer issues right now. Let's keep running it. It may just be because I was trying to use the unsynchronized M tasks thing and across the threads it was just not syncing up properly. That if I was to use this other variable instead outside of it, I'll be fine. If that's the case, then I may actually be able to still do something about this. If if this is the case, then we can return early. Otherwise, we're going to go through some heavier nonsense where we're going to create a mutex. On a standard scoped unique lock for it. Based on the weight mutex. So once this happens, notifies all, then all of these should fire regardless because they'll all be waiting on their own mutexes rather than them being beholden to someone else. And somehow losing sync. Or... Or I can actually, no, I can still totally use task sync for this. It won't freeze up because it is using a synchronized atomic type instead. Or not. Hey, it's going to break. So that's not going to work.
seems to be fine now. Of course, as, as soon as I like quit out and run it normally, it's going to start freezing up again, right? Between this and this, I didn't actually, yeah. So this case will freeze some somehow somewhere. I mean, I could change it to a wait for, but that's just kind of cheating. Okay, what's the testing that I'm seeing in here? Testing. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't freeze. It felt like it froze. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open four uh, consoles on the other screen, and I'm going to just have them just to keep firing this off, like in six windows, and then we'll see how that goes somehow. Engine. Two, three, four, five, six. You will do this running six times. Okay, I got that firing off in like s one, two, three, four, five windows. Yeah, and I got I'm getting freezes real real early already, so it's definitely not resolved. Boo. While that, is it like, this is the only thing I can think of, perhaps, is that it's just some something to do with it synchronizing with this, because it would have had to have grabbed the lock when, between here and here, or when, when these guys are done, then it goes to that guy. Or it's just because like this guy can't 
This guy can't grab the lock because it's being held by someone else down here. That must... Hold on, maybe... Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to run... Uh, where's the sixth? Missing one, aren't I? Okay, I've got it running in six other windows on the other screen. Like this, just firing off. I'm just going to see if any of them freeze up. Because I was under the impression that I can't... Okay, I can't actually tell if they are freezing or not now because... Uh, there's no actual number, so uh, test loop. What we're, go we're going to do while for in seek uh, sequence between one and fif uh, fifty, I guess. Starting ID. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So that leaves me with the idea that most probably what's actually happening is because it w I was attempting to use the same mutex is that someone else had the mutex at the time that it was unlocked and task complete. So then like this other guy, like someone, some other threads running it and using it. And I was under the impression that task complete would actually like put them on a list to unlock them when they had an opportunity uh, to, but what if, okay, let me, let me reread how condition variable is supposed to work with this. Wait, uh, notify. Notify, notify, notify. The notifying thread does not need to hold the lock on the same mutex as the one held by the waiting threads. In fact, doing so is a pessimization since the notified thread would immediately block again, waiting for the notifying thread to release the lock. However, some implementations recognize the situation and avoid this hurry up and wait scenario by transferring the waiting thread from the condition variables queue directly to the queue of the mutex within without waking it up. Under the lock may nevertheless, nevertheless be necessary to, hmm. Well, the old past, 50 goes. The notify thread will immediately block in waiting for the notifying thread to release the lock. Okay, uh, condition variable, same mutex, same, yeah.
Why was I using the same thing? I, w I was using the same lock because I was trying to use this variable. So if I use, may so it may just be best to kind of do, 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 do this. Because I am using a complete different, uh, already atomically, whatever variable. So let's put that up and let's try vim test loop. Do it up to 100. If I can get through, what, five, one, two, three, four, five hundred loops of this thing. Across these five other, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. If we can get through 500 loops of this program without it locking up, I'll be happy. Well, it failed right away, actually. One of these just locked up on the first one. So that's not uh, good at all. Let's see if anyone else locks up. Okay, we got one that locked up at eight, one that locked up at 15, 10, 17, okay. That's pretty trash. Again, I could go for wait for, but that's basically cheating. My mind. But. Uh, One millisecond divided by 20. Let's do that. We'll just go through a wait for loop. And it fails right away. What's this do? Bool? Okay. Uh, what does Boolean do? Pick up, wait for. Uh, the Boolean returns. False if the predicate still evaluates to false after the rel time, otherwise true. Okay. While not this. Two, three, okay, let's rerun these guys again. Just all firing off again, very slowly. Up to 100 each. I don't really like this. But I don't really have much uh, thing, do I? So I don't really understand threads that I don't understand how to kind of get this thread pool to work apparently without having to kind of resort to this 
So we've got 23, 24, okay. And we're just slowly going off. Forty. Oh, uh, oh no, that was just scrolled down. Uh, that's why. Hmm. Oh, this one froze up at thirty-nine. So that's not enough, apparently. This one is still. Dang it. Maybe I just have to go online and find someone else's implementation. Because this is uh, not working. Cancel, 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 cancel. Because I can't get this to work. All right. Internet search time. Let's find, let's find a reference implementation that supposedly works. Hmm. Where is this? Thread pool HPP, that's just including another header. Okay, here we go. Try post. I don't see. How this is supposed to work. Where's the uh oh there it is, worker HPP. Mm -hmm. Start stop. They're using atomic flags. They got a Q. Is it a Q per worker? Yeah, okay, this has got a Q per worker. That's not what I'm looking for, I think. Owns task queue and executing thread. In thread, it tries to pop task from Q. If Q is empty, then it tries to steal task from a sibling. Okay, no, it can steal tasks from a sibling worker. If steals unsuccessful, then spins with one millise millisecond. Delay. So again, it's just kind of doing a... Hmm. I mean, I guess it kind of makes some sense. You have exclusive, well, no, because then if another queue, no, okay, let's find another one. Okay, next task, a thread loop. Active count, thread count, join, but it doesn't really have any weight functionality, which is what I keep colliding on.
So again, basically the same idea that I have here. Well, sorry, here. Basically the exact same. So if tasks empty and then terminate, then it returns. Yeah, okay, same thing. Otherwise, temp tasks. We pop. Front. Then we do the task. And then I have the end processing flag. So that's basically the same thing again. So why am I the only one who just keeps getting hammered by this. Why? Okay. Uh, GDB, help me. Please trip the problem in a few seconds a few runs come on maybe like waiting for all threads is just something I can't do I won't be able to do Maybe, um, because it is almost all because of the wait for all tasks thing. Okay, hold on. Search thread. Ooh. for task completion someone must have done something similar that I can kind of uh, C++ please No, that's not. No, this doesn't work either. I got, <laughs> I got a, okay, this is the one I already looked at. This doesn't have this functionality. Let's get task queued, tasks running, task total, thread count, parallelized loop, push task, push task, reset. There you go. Wait for tasks. While true, if not paused. If, oh, this is just a really, and uh, sleeper yield. I'm oh, sorry, what's sleep? Okay, this actually may be useful. This this is the first one I was looking at a moment ago. That does have a sleep or yield that might be able to work. If I can find this, what is this? Three, four, where it's just sleep four. Hmm. While not this, then we can yield while we wait. So 
So we yield to anyone else who needs to be running right now, and then we'll come back in a moment, presumably. That's the idea. Make remake this and then rerun on one, two, three, four, five. Go. Okay, these are all in the 90s, so this is probably going to work. Now, this is not really what I was hoping for. Like, I, I did kind of want to technically pause this thread until, like, I was alerted to the fact that something had been completed. But this is a, this is a lot closer to that behavior than nothing and just doing a really tight, you know, super hot loop. And then at least there's a good chance it will pause and yield to another thread that needs to run first and then come back to this in a moment, perhaps, if something needs to run. It's not as nice as I wanted to, but it's a hell of a lot closer without breaking everything. See, all the rest of these completed with 100 runs, so that's going to have to be it. So, <clears throat> with that in the mind, is there a way I can... Basically, kind of go back, reuse this, and rework it to that. Because all I really did differently was close that. We got that thread pool and stuff. So we have task complete. We don't need that anymore. That's going away. We're just going to have the condition variable for that. We're going to have threads task sync. Tasks, task count, I need that, down here. Cued, B0. This combined with what we're going to do here, which is going to be, we're going to get, we're going to trash this. Task complete is also going away. We're going to go up here. We're going to have plus plus m tasks queued. That this is still safe to do this. And then while. Or m tasks processing is greater than zero. Then we'll do standard this thread yield. Okay. Let me go ahead and test this again in the side. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll wait for that. Okay. I mean, I had myself muted for that whole time, so that's terrible. Okay. I got it resolved seemingly Again, set it all back, it's hunky, hunky dory, it's pushed up. So now what I want to do is try to create another thread pool. That thread pool that I just kind of modified and fi hopefully uh, fixed up is a bog standard one. It's got a pool of threads, you send it tasks, those tasks are spread out upon the threads that are there. You can complete them 
Fantastic. I want to try to have like two groups of threads. I'm not sure if I can put them in the same pool, like in the same or same class, or if I can have two different classes kind of interact with each other. Where I'm going to have like one set of what I would consider like synchronous threads, which would be like things that need to be completed like immediately. Um, like things that have to be done like you know within a certain loop of the of the process of the application and then i'd have asynchronous threads which would be things for like the much slower operations things like loading resources and stuff that would be like off in the other because what i do right now is i have two separate thread pools right now if i uh, go down here and have a little look i have, I'll have like async like i'll have that actually does nothing but i would have two different thread pools a synchronous and an asynchronous thread pool which you would schedule tasks towards and they would operate independently what i want to try to do is have a thread pool that instead has both sets of threads together and I want to kind of have them share the tasks in a way to say, like, if asynchronous threads have completed all their available tasks, then start, like, helping out on synchronous threads to get maybe the main loop uh, done a little bit quicker for whatever reason. And then, like, it'll just, it'll just do, like, one task, and then it'll recheck, are there any asynchronous tasks? And then it'll... Th flow back to that if there are otherwise it'll keep speeding up the the main uh thread set the main synchronous set of threads the, the synchronous tasks and yeah and speaking of asynchronous tasks would be some kind of ability to possibly like set a task to be delayed for some time in the future at the same time so only run uh what am i thinking when pulling audio data from a file like audio let's say audio is done in a loop every 10 milli like a 10 millisecond chunks is sent to the audio buffer so you can say like you know you load in a hundred milliseconds at once and then say in 50 milliseconds i want to start loading another 100 milliseconds worth of stuff depending on how long it takes to load this stuff maybe that's kind of a bit ah, that's sketchy though I at least want the this the the task sharing at least for asynchronous tasks to help out or steal synchronous tasks and speed those up by running them faster or more of them at once anyways uh do the other things will pass they'll pass okay so that's pushed up so <clears throat> I guess I got to start on this, this new thread pool. I don't know. Can I get them to share? Can I get them to share? Hmm. I might be able to. Might. Or is it just too complicated it may just be too complicated to do like across two classes. I'll just kind of put it in one. So yeah, yeah, I'll kind of, okay, because what do I need? Started, no, threads, eh, not really. I'll need two like synchronous and async tasks. So, so I need this times two, these time. So I need this group times two and threads yes so just basically this 
Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... Um, Grateful tasks to complete, then they'll cancel out. We do asynchronous threads first, then the asynchronous threads after. We can actually get the threads all together, so then we only need, yeah. Okay, um, split thread pool. And do I really want to have all this stuff up front? Do I need all this stuff up front? Not really. Okay, I'll kind of change it over to a C style kind of thing as well, then perhaps. Nah. I mean, I'm kind of, yeah. I, hmm. I don't know. I mean, if I kind of split it up, then I don't need a, nearly as many of these up in the header. which would be a boon. I mean, I'm just going to be passing pointers of this thing around anyways, realistically. So, yeah. Uh, We'll have that. That's pretty okay. Point for the pointer. Unless I can make it into like a handle type, which actually may be a bit smarter, realistically. So, do doing handles. How do I do handles? I do handles by.
Uh, we still need the start. We need to uh, terminate. We need the. with a more specific error code type. Schedule tasks, wait for tasks. Hmm. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay, we got those, and we want to be able to wait on these things. Wait on sync threads. Split thread pool. Sync, async, all. Put 
that there, 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 there. Mm -hmm. That's fairly clean. I like it. That's all you have to as a, as a user. This is all you need to know. It's just this, and you got these guys. So you're not overloaded with like, oh, what's all this stuff down here? I mean, eh, does it really matter? Not really. Well, to me, it kind of does because then there's a lot less stuff going on up here from headers. So a lot less that's being pulled into everywhere. Which, to my mind, was, I mean, it's, it's not something to be immediately concerned about, but, like, in the long run, if you don't take steps to help alleviate that, then you will run into issues where you have engines that take hours to compile. Which is just no fun. No fun at all. Got that, we're gonna add split thread pool, which is the last one. Okay, we're gonna have a struct for in the empty namespace actually. which will be very much like this. We have started. So we need to include down here. We need this. How do I do this? Substruct. Task group data. So we have standard Q. Tasks. Sync. Upcoming scheduled tasks. Scheduled or queued. So that's 
standard conditional condition variable. variable okay then we'll have the threads and then we have the two sets we have Okay, and then we'll have down here like void uh, sync task runner. Something like that and that. Simple enough, okay. So we gotta go through the functions now, so. How about this? If either of these, then we're going to have, we're going to return like a specific error code for that. that I don't quite have yet. Mm, I don't really think so, actually. And I want an error code, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the way to go about it. So hold on, let's do this here. Hmm. 
this has to be kind of like outside of it. Hmm. Okay, for the moment, I'm just going to use this as is. Return that. Not quite return that. We got past those two cases, then we want to go to thread pool start. Basically, we want to make is there anything else? Zero, zero, pool. Okay, we'll just start. We just create it now. So, hmm. Is this is the one location we want to have it. I'm thinking so. Okay, so in the headers of these ones, we'd have like an upload request or whatever. We'd have, no? Yeah, there we go, handle casts. How big is this? 368 bytes. If there's an error code, so we're going to say, hey, you know.
an error code, whatever it may be. Okay, we got that. So then we can start going through the stuff we want to do. Started. We, we're only creating the pool. We're not starting it right now. He started at false. Terminate threads. Da 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 da. We have to have dot sync tasks. Oh, I need the number of, yeah. Okay. There's actually no way for this to fail, is there? After that initial point. Yes, there is. Yes, there is.
Let's see if malloc actually does what I think it does. Like, does it actually return null pointer? Or it just returns what? Or null if the request fails. Okay, so if it becomes null pointer, then we fail to create it, then we can delete the pool. We've got, we've lost nothing. That's the only external thing right there. Yeah. Okay, then we can try to destroy everything. Stop the thread pool first. Then we go around. We gotta delete the thread pool, the threads, the thread set. Then delete that. Is that really it? Because stop will do, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Starting the thread pool. With the possible return error code. This is the point where we're kind of going to go through this. We got that. So then we've got to go through so we're starting it right now. Otherwise we're returning that. Start with the sync thread. So four. Um, to start it in place now uh, in place new or whatever it is in place new C++ okay this equals new that Two star equals that. Okay. Let's run a new p pool threads. 
I. So at that memory location, it's going to be a standard thread, which is going to be running callable args. It's going to be calling this function. That's the idea of what's going on here. No, no conversion from that to const no throw for second argument. It's because it's empty. Standard thread. How do I do this? Constructor function args three creates a new standard thread and out associates it with the thread of execution. DK copy of stuff callable object. Okay, uh, what if I pass it this? that no matching call the constructor operator new this is supposed to be what oh, okay there we go because I was giving it a uh, deep referenced location Async task runner for those ones. And then we return. We're done. That should be it. Then we've got to switch to the stopping. So for the moment, I'm actually just going to copy this running type function, looks like. With that, basically, it's not going to be that. It's going to be pool sync tasks dot sync. Throwing the lock. Basically, this, which is going to be. This is basically all, this is going to resolve down to just a offset from P pool anyway, since they are static. So I'm not too concerned about that one. If that. Uh, running count. Tasks, tasks. 
execute count. Task lock is local. Running terminate. Okay, and then we'll just kind of do the same thing for async for the moment. Except instead it'll be going for async tasks. And I'll figure out how they kind of work together in a moment. A, 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 whoop, A, A, A. Okay. I think I'm going to need a sync lock in, in here as well. But for the moment, we've got this. Uh, then we've got to do the stopping of the threads. Correct? Yes. Realistically, these error codes should be available here, even if so that they can be compared to outside for error codes. You can check the error code against the specific one you may be expecting for whatever reason. And so I should probably change other things for it as well. I don't need to have like the conversion stuff, uh, this stuff to be out there. But I do need at least the enum out there. And I should probably do the same thing for the other error codes later. So I need to put that on the list. Um, make error codes publicly available. If it's not already started, just return that. Otherwise, we want to like say p pool. Set that to true. Then at the end, we'll p pool terminate. It's false. P pool started. It's false. So at this point, we want to say, hey, we want to. Notify everything that we're terminating. So m sync tasks dot available dot notify all. Wait for all threads complete. That's why I couldn't find. 
find it. Then we've got to go through with the joining of all threads. We join them all, then we're done, we leave. Okay. Success. Now we just got some two cheap threads here, uh, functions here to do. Uh, task scheduling. So, same thing as basically as before. Now we do this. Do, 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 do. Wait for task, schedule task. Okay, so it's task group dot sync. Notify one. I'm assuming, I'm actually going to assume that it's already started and moving at this point, or 
actually going to give real error codes for whatever. And then we've got, a, we've got the, f the fun stuff waiting for threads. People sync dot asks dot favorable or cube count is greater than zero or Okay, now we need the uh, split error, split thread pool, thread pool. basically along the same lines as this here. Close those. We've got basically all of this. Except instead of that, we're going to be working off of that. Okay. 
296 compared to 107 to accomplish basically the same thing. Not quite as great. Uh, on the other hand, I do have a bit more on this side. Sorry, 58 to 94. Eh. Uh, I'd prefer to keep it this way. It's more modifiable or a bit easier for me to read. Mm -hmm. To my mind. Going to need a new test for it. Even if RST Okay, first of all, we'll just make sure that the threads work as expected, first of all, which are basically going to be the same as the other thread pool for the moment. Starting with a zero, threads fail. So we're going to do, what are we going to do?
prior false or require Okay, they just need different tests, basically. Okay.
I've got... <laughs> I'm so into this, I just completely shit up for the past half hour, haven't I? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making tests. I'm just making tests. The thing that, yes, always should. Hmm. I should actually have them like properly do checks. Back to this, we'll, we will have them auto, auto, auto. That, that, that. Okay. Okay, then we've got the tasks to do. Termination. Let's just see if this works so far. Apparently not. What we got? What we got? What we got? Test, task, multiple different. Um, it's just local to this compilation unit. So, thank you. Okay. No test round because I have some. Some of these are actually like the same one again, aren't they? Split this guy.
I actually have to say this, right? Is that what's going on? I just actually have to. Yeah. Require false will do what I want, right? I think. So I don't have line 51 anymore. Okay, there we go. So we've got the thread pool. We're going to start it basically right away. We have the easy clock timer from this. I'm going to schedule a task. Waiting on sync tasks. Same thing for async tasks. Same thing for both. Look for all threads. So we'll just kind of actually split this up a little bit. You know what? No, I'll just kind of leave it like that. Sync, async, all tasks. Termination already does basically the same thing. 
We'll just kind of do it on one side for schedule tasks. Sync and async. Oh, I also need to start the dang thing, don't I? Okay. So it's all in the just about the right time. I'm not sure if I can actually disable these because this checking the upper bound I believe kept failing in CI on Mac OS for whatever reason. I guess they have some poor or poorer scheduling stuff going on going on than the other systems I mean, it should take about one second to complete all these but it kept taking like over that even though that's the 30 percent like leeway i mean i also got a bunch more tests so i may actually want to cut these down to like half half a second i'll do that actually 10 10 10 10. So 30, 150, so it'll be 650. Just to make testing a little bit faster. Do the same thing about here. So see if that's a bit that takes that should take about half the time. Mm, yeah, that felt about right. So at least this is, and I'm building with a thread sanitizer, right? Do, 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 yes. So I'm not having trouble with uh, thread data races going on quite yet. So I'm gonna put at least that in for the moment.
I'll probably actually bring it down even further later. Then like a hundred and something like that, and really crank down the millisecond. It's because it should, it should no take nowhere near a millisecond to return back. It should be like microseconds, if even maybe nanoseconds. So now at this point, I'm going to take a quick break. No, I'm not. I should really complete this. What time is it? Uh, I've spent this a couple hours on this already. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's figure out the asynchronous stuff. Because that's going to be required somehow. There we are. Okay. Up to async. If you want to have like split sync and async, then you can just do two thread pools. If you want to have this behavior, that's why we're here. So we're here, right? If there's a ta if there's an async task, you do it. If we're terminating, do that. Should we do that yet? No, we shouldn't. Otherwise, we're going to try something here. If I try, okay, if I do a try lock, does that return like a Boolean if I get it right? Tries to lock the mutex, returns immediately on successful lock acquisition, returns true, otherwise returns false. Okay. If we're trying to terminate, we've run out of sync and async tasks, then it'll go to terminate anyways. So that's about right. The only reason it'll come out of here is because we have this or that. So we don't need this. We will need to do this if we're going to run through this. We need to unlock that because we're not doing it. If we've done this, that means we've acquired this lock. So we unlock the async. And then we'll go, we've, we've acquired the lock for this. So we grab a, a task from it.
remove it. We're not going to be keeping it around anyways. It may be cheaper if it's uh, got a for some other allocation somewhere else. Sync tasks dot tasks dot pop. Queued. If people sync tasks dot tasks dot empty because we have to have this before we can even try this, then continue. Dot work equals true. One task, and then we got a sync task start running count. Let's see if uh, the thread sanitizer is going to go crazy over this, or if it's just not going to work at all, which is also very possible, apparently. Apparently very possible, because that's precisely what happened. It's a frozen. Yes, yeah, it's just freezing right up. Okay. If we acquire the sync lock, unlock the async. I need to unlock in case I went through this and then, then this and there was no work to be done. Okay, so this is just breaking uh, down on this, right? It's not anything else 
that I might be trying to, to do right now. Right? If I do this, it runs. Hmm, that is going to be a problem. Because if the asynchronous threads are going to start taking uh, synchronous stuff, then it's going to basically be done in about half the time. So I do need to double for sync tasks. Okay, uh, let's try running this a whole bunch of times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that, 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 and that. Got the old try loop going around again. We'll see if it freezes up in 500 rounds. BRB. Rut row, I got one that f failed about 50 away, a rows in. Starting at about 50. It's only one that uh, halted, but it still is a case I have to, I have to deal with. That's unfortunate. So really hoping that was not going to have to be the case, but Okay, good. I actually have the data race and it came out. What is it? Oh, friend, what is it? It's massive. Why? Is it just, you know, maybe this is just uh, from doing code coverage stuff. Let's get the code coverage for the moment, and then I can go back into and try to find out. I may also just want to split the two tests so I know which thread pool it is that's always breaking. Moving forward, but let us see the coverage on that as it stands. There we are, open with chromium. It's very good. Not perfect, but very good. Compared to whatever, ah, yeah, error code, that makes sense.
That does make sense, and that also makes sense. This schedule sync task, I didn't actually check that. And this is an allocation failure, I can't really test that. I don't know how to make that happen deliberately. I can test uh, scheduling tasks when not started. Oh yeah, I also need to destroy these things. That actually may have helped. Because it was just it was just it, it would just keep going forever, wouldn't it? Possibly. Possibly. Anyways, Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm double deleting something. But when when a oh win is the question. Oh there it is. Okay, let's bring that back up. And we're up to 97, 93 to 97%. So the only ones that are still left should be these, which I can't really do much about without an allocation failure. The rest of this is all covered up. Try with uh, code coverage off. It will turn the address sanitizer on. Okay, back to thread. Mm 
Okay. One, two, two of those. We okay, I guess I'm going to call it there at a night there. It's about three hours in. Three, three and a half hours in. I've got it most of the way there. I'm just probably going to do some more, like adding some more tests offline. Maybe fix a small tweak a bug here or two and that'll be it. So I'll call it there. Cheers.